<laughs> it gets worse and worse. So the bottom line, Paul, Paul Michael, the bottom line is this week, as of now, if you selling CBD products on the high street in your health shop, then you need some different license this week. Not quite. Not, Not quite. quite. Because, because remember those, those CBDs, so what happened last year, Anthony's very well aware of this, they, they released that government gazette notice, and what they did was they actually exempted CBD from the schedules of the Act. So it, it wasn't scheduled at all. It was, it, it was in purgatory, as it were. But then they, they, they backtracked and they, they said, although in terms of the Medicines Act we have excluded something from the operation of the Medicines Act, you still need a license from us to sell it, which of course was a circular legal nonsense, which I think what is why they've now scheduled CBD as Schedule Zero, or, or CBD below that, that 600 milligram a month or 20 milligram a day threshold. But what the provisions of complementary medicine and Schedule Zero say is that you can sell it in a storefront, so you don't need a license to sell the CBD. So those pop-up stores are actually okay as long as their CBD meets those or is below those thresholds. Mm -hmm. It's the grower and the manufacturer and the wholesaler and the distributor that require the licenses in terms of the act. So uh. it's not cause for panic for the people who are sitting with the stock and the mm. stores that they want to sell them from. I see. I don't need get a that license bit. to retail. So like but the shop that my son works at? It's no, fine. it's own laws at times, so that's not to say that they don't decide to raid and confiscate everything and then try to charge you criminally. Sure. Um, it's always good talking to you, PM. You've got a way of saying it. I feel as if I've, I know more now than I've read the Gazette ten times. Okay. Anthony and I have talked at length about it, but there's something that just clicked there. When you put it into like yeah, layman's I'm, terms, it really helps. You know, we, we've got a lot of friends and supporters and um, affiliate companies that are selling CBD products all over South Africa, and they're they're edgy. They want to know, but mm. if they're the set, they're, if they're the end user, the the, the end retailer, then. I think uh, listening to this later on during the week when they pick it up, they're going to be a lot less <coughs> agitated. As long as their supply chain is legit, because also I'm not, what I'm seeing a big lack of in the CBD market is I'm not seeing these certificates that show the, the source of origin and the independent who's analysis your, and who's all this. The farmer? Yeah, I'm not seeing the seal of approval mm. from their distributors or anything like that, even though it's all completely kind of grey still, the CBD thing. Um, back at the beginning, the plantceuticals, <coughs> yeah. it says on here, there's a message for Myrtle, but this is all CBD growing in the tile, this is all one batch, it's all batched in, it's all been tested, they're on it. So yeah. there are people doing it under the radar, essentially that's an illegal product now, I presume. Not if the CBD falls below the prescribed... Um, that was another thing. Um, the, the shop that your son works at, and they've got CBD. All, sorry, PM, am I right in saying that you're not allowed to have a big bottle of CBD now? Haven't they changed the size of the bottle or something stupid? Um, what they've done was, <laughs> in the last in the last government gazette, they spoke about 20 milligram daily dose. Mm. Somebody might have like a 20 litre bottle and say, well, I'm going to divide it into 20 milligram daily doses. What they now say is that the product can't contain more than 600 milligrams of CBD, which is 30 times 20 a milligrams, yeah. so a month's worth of 20 milligram doses. So, yeah, you, you mustn't have more than 600 milligrams, and presumably you must then also have a little um, um, bit of writing on your bottle or a little message saying that you must not consume more than 20 milligrams a day, because, you know, everybody listens to and uh, back to you, Anthony. That must be causing havoc in your world. All of the people that are doing yeah. everything in your industry, that must be complete. N it's nuts. Well, generally, you know, it's, there's, there's almost, for compliance within complementary medicine, for all the companies to, to get their licensing in place, there's been a sort of a, a six-month moratorium where com companies can get their licensing in place. But like I said earlier, the the tedious and expensive process of getting these licenses is going to eliminate a lot of people from continuing to to, to sell. Um, 
you know, also you have to take into account when we, when we obtain these kinds of licenses, whether it's to manufacture, import, distribute, or, or, or um, wholesale, you now need to be pharmaceutically licensed. And I don't think people quite understand all that, and I'm actually putting a position paper for you um, quite soon, which will explain all the technical details of what is required. For instance, one of the requirements is that you have a pharmacist working full-time for your company as the responsible person. And that person is the one who signs off on all the paperwork and becomes the de facto CEO of your company as the interface with government. Well, that's a hell of, a, that's a hell of an overhead. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, a, a regulatory pharmacist who, who, who knows their stuff, I mean, a normal pharmacist off the street who's been working in a... In a in a community pharmacy really doesn't have the know-how in this uh, as much as the people that, that are trained in this. Uh, you're looking at a salary of sort of 70,000 rand and up a month mm -hmm. is sort of the going rate. Um, and that person's basically going to sit in your office with your CBD twiddling his thumbs for the rest of the month. That's going to bring up the price of the product and then everyone's the going to complain because it's so expensive. The law, the law says that pharmacist has to be at your premises at all times for inspection. So if they come, the pharmacist to the RP is not there, you, you, you've got some serious answering to do. Sure. Um, bear in mind, if, if, you're not, if, you, if you breach any of these... Uh, Conditions under the Medicines Act, you you face criminal sanction of a ten year prison sentence. What? Um, yeah, uh, up to ten years in prison. So you know it, it's criminalised. Should you not have that license in place? Anthony, we're going to watch with interest. I think I'm going to leave it at that for the CBD bit. It was great having you in. It got a bit glitchy here and there, but I'm glad you got all your wireless back. Um, we watch with interest. Good luck with everything. Now you know what it's like being in a high court. It's tense, eh? It's not pleasant at all. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very stressful world in there. So well done for doing two days in the belly of the beast. And um, we'll catch up with you again on the Hotbox Show. Thank you so much, man. It's been enlightening. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Cheers, bye. Cheers. So, PM, there he is. We got two horses' mouths tonight in one show. That was such an epic yeah. thing. So, and... Um, we, we feel, I feel completely privileged that I just managed to score 38 minutes free legal advice from Schindler's Inc. That's just... We that did it! two birds in the head, Dad. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Is everybody frozen? I think it all froze. No, it didn't. PM, parting shots. Um, you mentioned earlier on that um, if we have to go back to court, the bottom line is we have to hustle them somehow. And this thing you heard of... Um, yeah, I thought something had gone down there. Yeah. We've lost... Uh, you seem to have lost our guests for Let a second. Let me take the gap then. So in the spirit of all that, guys, there's a lot going on with CBD, THC, but at the end of the day, should CBD be treated the same as THC? This week's poll's answers are, hell no, faux show, or meh. I don't meh. care. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Shit, it's complicated. They made it that way. Pretty yes, hectic. Yes. Ah, oh, there we go. Hello. Hey, back. That was a weird drop. I don't know what happened there. So, Pim, I don't know whether you got my the, the, the last of that. Um, we're very, very grateful for having such um, a lengthy chat and some really, really epic legal advice free on the interwebs on the Hotbox show. We're, we're absolutely delighted we managed to catch up yeah. with you. Um, so, all that I said in response, Jules, was that you, you've had years of free legal advice. What's 38 minutes? <laughs> Hey, listen, we appreciate every second. You know that, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, actually, come to think of it, he's absolutely right. Yeah. We did get a we did get an email uh, probably just before lockdown for 28 rand for disbursements or something. <laughs> so, but the legal advice we always got free. It's the faxes that cost the money. It's the faxes, yeah. And so the right, time, but coin. And, you know... Um, I'm on record in the early days of not having a good attitude towards le the, the law, legalities. I've been in the underground all my life and the law and everything I've treated with total disdain. It's because of people like Paul Michael and the crew at Schindler's. It's t t totally changed around the way that I look mm. at the law and the people who deal in it. They're a fascinating bunch. I really enjoy your thread on Facebook, PM. I don't get involved too much on any of it. I watch. But yes. today's was a classic about the church. 
the, ch the Church of Cannabis. I mean, are you doing it? Are, uh, can we expect an invite to Santon the weekend after next? Uh, I may not be limited to cannabis. I mean, it, it might be the, the Church of... Um, Gin and tonic? For example. Yeah. Somebody's already suggested a sacred poiki. You know, <laughs> um, unlike the Pastafarians who wear the colander on their head, I think a poiki might be a little bit too heavy. <laughs> we'll work it out as we go along. You know? um, religions take 2,000 years to establish themselves. You know, They start off as a cult and then all of a sudden... Uh, you know. All right, well, if you if it's a cult you're after, I'm your man. I'll be round there like a shot. So okay. basically what you're saying is you've got to just evade jail time long enough to convince people that your cult is actually a religion. Yeah. Cool. I'm down. Maybe so, but I imagine that inside prison is probably a good place to start a cult as well. So yeah, no? Right. Yeah. God forbid. <laughs> right, well, there's, um, I think there's less and less stoners around the country do, being in prison mm. pretty much for all the hard work you guys have been doing for the last seven years Big time. and it has changed a lot if we if this had been going down three years ago and we were still getting arrested for weed and weed and weed and weed and the alcohol and the, it would have been a totally different world mm. yeah. i'm having a lot of fun watching prohibition come into regular people's lounges now uh, you maybe heard the anecdote of our, uh, our friend's mother was driving around with the vodka wrapped up in the yoga mat you know and it's like all of a sudden, real life, honest to God, normal working people are criminals. It's a fascinating, it's, it's like we've got this hard and fast um, uh, uh, Petri dish of it, basically. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. I said this last week, I'll say it again this week. It's like people are starting to smuggle their brandy and their, their Rothmans inside their weed. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking forward to seeing how many people actually turn around and sue the police for unlawful arrest for all of the unlawful arrests that have already taken place, and that will continue to take place. Sue us, Jay. Sure. <laughs> no. We need to find a way to make it more, like, really accessible for people to be able to sue for unlawful arrest. Like, this is my new passion, Paul. <laughs> yeah, look, we've got, that's another whole mm. can of worms. We've got two other advocates dealing with two other different scenarios. This is Mr. Mm. Trial of the Plant. We, we're ready and loaded, but we haven't got, the thought of it's just like, oh. But, hey, if it's virtual, it sounds like a breeze. Anthony Reese did it all virtually. He didn't smell all this, all the, he didn't smell the defence. He was on yeah. Zoom. <laughs> Paul Michael, parting shots. Thank you very much for joining us on the Hotbox Show. It took a, it took 134 weeks, and I'm glad I'm patient. Yeah. It was great. It was amazing. Thank you. Good to join you guys. Thanks so much. Have a great evening. Thank you, you PM. Thank you. Super duper.